Is violence ever justified? When is peaceful protest simply not enough? Is it time for a revolution? But what about the strategy of non-violent direct action? Well, stupid, open a history book to the happy-go-lucky pages of civil rights in the chapters of figures like Malcolm X, Rosa Parks, MLK, or Nelson Mandela. I know it's too much to ask for you to be well-read and have a nuanced view on these complicated topics, so here's the cliff notes that you can bring up to make yourself sound a little bit more educated. We need to make some distinctions. Let's start with peaceful protests. You stay within the laws by kneeling, picketing, or just about anything else while being a good Jamie Foxx and Gerald Butler movie. Uh-oh, big problem. You're labeled a hippie and nobody cares about your cause. It's time to light some shit on fire. No. Before we step into illegal territory, note that people can not follow the rules without breaking the law. You could be a bus driver and not collect fares, or be a police officer and not arrest protesters. Also, violence and harm are not the same thing. If all the doctors protested by not working, it's harmful because people die, but the doctors aren't the one putting pillows to patients. Even violence is multi-layered. There could be violence to property, violence towards self, and it's not always violence to other people. Is violence ever justified? Yeah, you come running at me with a knife or acoustic guitar, I'll punch you in the mouth. But violence in the form of police brutality, that's a no-no. Protest? Maybe, we'll get to it. But for now, understand that violence is context sensitive. Civil disobedience. This usually involves breaking the law to make a statement and being ready to accept jail time or whatever. Through their disobedience of the law, they draw attention to the laws or policies that they believe require reassessment or rejection. Actions convey meaning. Striking a gavel can mean order, and sitting at the back of the bus can mean I oppose segregation. The message has to be communicated meaningfully and in good faith. People need to know what you're doing. This also means that if you're an anarchist, you can't piggyback on another cause. Nobody knows what you're doing. Stop breaking stuff. Go home, Kyle. The message needs to have some positive moral quality. That's the difference between standing in front of a tank in Tiananmen Square and standing in traffic in a tank top because you just don't care. Alright, we're breaking laws and it's not working. Time to get violent. Radical protest. This is where we really up the ante. The aim is rapid change. By any means necessary. Enough talk, time for action. Effective change can be rapidly achieved through coercion and intimidation rather than communication and persuasion. Revolutionary action. We're in the end game now. Revolutionary action is the final step. The system is too broken, there's nothing to fix it. Tear it down and start over again. It's a complete regime change. People will be hurt. They're collateral damage. This is war. But is it a just war? Justification. Returning to the earlier question, violence is sometimes justified depending on the context, but when is it justified? Like an asshole, we can answer, it depends. Many believe that violence is unjustified if it's possible to achieve the same outcomes by non-violent means. But just what does possibility mean? Is it possible for warlords recruiting chopped soldiers to be visited by three ghosts and suddenly realize the error of their ways? It's possible in the technical sense, but if that's your argument, you're a miserable prick. Practicality and feasibility need to enter into considerations for justified violence. Inaction is also morally condemnable. We can't wait while people suffer injustices to their basic civil rights and liberties. Striking a balance. Justifying violence is a complex topic, but here are some considerations to think about. Law and morality. It's certainly harder to justify illegal violence, but it's easier to justify violence in the name of morality. Another consideration is previous attempts or prior action. Some argue that violence should be a last resort. One should also note the communicative power, the specificity or clarity of goals for change or reforms in policies or laws. Also consider the effectiveness or likelihood of success. Historically, violence has been effective, but also note the harm that results. We have history of this. The 64 Harlem riots, the 68 MLK riots, and the 92 Rodney King riots. In many of these cases, wanted destruction of property led to damaging minority-owned businesses. There's many ways that reform. Legal, economic, political. But they all start with us. Changing our norms and attitudes. Changing what we care about. Having a unified and concrete cause. So to quote Baldwin, God gave Noah the rainbow sign. It's no more water. It's the fire next time. Fuck the police coming straight.